Hello again, everybody. Today, we are gonna talk about two basic concepts, but really, really important concepts. Uh, the first we're gonna start with is slipping and scoring. You may be familiar with this, but it's always good to have a nice review. And we're gonna talk about wedging. So wedging is a very important process when it comes to working with clay. So let's get right to it, starting with slipping and scoring. Uh, you might have seen me working on this in my last video. Uh, I added a little bit of texture to it. I kind of cleaned up the edges. And my thought is it'd be kind of nice if it stood up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a platform so that I can get it to stay up. So once again, I'm taking a separate piece of clay and I'm just kind of flattening it out. I could take my knife. I could shape it in a lot of different ways. I'm going to leave it kind of natural for now and then I can come back to that later. So if I'm gonna stick this up on the surface of what I've already started here, what's important is that you have a good connection. So if I were gonna stand it up like this, there's just this very small point attaching, and that's not really enough space to hold up the weight of what's above. Think about it this way. If we look at our arm, the thickest part of our arm is at the shoulder where it has to attach to your body. The reason for that is they don't want our arms to get pulled off. So instead, they make our bodies so that um, where there are conjunctions, they tend to be thicker. Same idea with clay. So I'm going to attach like this. So slipping and scoring is a process of attaching your clay together. So first thing I'm going to do is figure out how I want it. I like it the way it is. And I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm just going to mark where this piece is standing up. So that's a really nice trick. I can look right at this piece of clay. I drew a little area there, and that tells me where I need to score the clay. So in order to understand slipping and scoring, we gotta talk about slip. So you each will have a little jar where your slip will be kept. Uh, it's important to keep the edge, this top rim of the jar clean so that you can keep covering it because slip will dry out if you don't cover it correctly. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a like popsicle stick or a wooden tool, and I'm gonna take a little bit of the slip out just so you can see it. Slip is just watered down clay. Uh, you want it to be anywhere from like a really watery consistency to something like a pudding. Before I put it on, I'm gonna do my scoring. So where I have that area, I'm gonna make some X's. Now you'll notice I'm putting a lot of them on. You don't wanna do this with just some teeny tiny little X's you can barely see. Your point is to rip up the surface of the clay on both pieces, so I'm gonna do the same on the other. This time I'm gonna use a fork, which is also a really nice tool to do it with. You wanna rip up that surface so it's really able to press in and connect together. Think like a zipper. Zippers, remember they've got all these teeth? They go together like this. If zippers only had two teeth, it really wouldn't be as strong. All right, so I've got both edges nice and uh, scored. I'm gonna take my slip you can put it on both sides, or in my case, I'm just putting a lot on one side. And then I'm gonna stand up my piece. Now a little bit of pressure here goes a long way to kind of help get it to stand up. And then there's some extra slip. I think it's easier to see on the back here. Some extra slip you might wanna get out of the way. I could use a tool to do this. I could also use my finger to do this just so that it's not in the way of uh, future items. Okay, last thing. Whenever you have a piece, especially if it's a piece that's got a kind of weird juncture, it's good to make what I like to call a band-aid coil. Looks a lot like a worm here, a little, I don't know, yeah, a little worm. So I'm just gonna place that into the seam. Now I can go and use a tool if I want to. I could also use my finger to do this. But basically the idea is I'm gonna smooth it in to connect those two pieces together so that in the end, I don't see the seam anymore. Now I would, best practice, says you do it on the other side too, uh, and even on the edges, just so that you make sure it's really, really well attached. Sometimes people will skip steps of slipping and scoring uh, with the expectation that if it looks like it sticks together, it'll stay stuck together in the kiln. But guess what happens? Once the clay dries out and there's that no water between it, it will just fall right off. And I can see that you haven't slipped and scored. So make sure you follow those steps. Remember we start with scoring where they're gonna attach using a needle tool or a fork. We take some slip, 
We put that slip between them, think of it like the glue. And then lastly, we create a little Band-Aid coil, rolling it in our hands and we smooth it in between. Uh, even if you have really small pieces, like let's say I wanted to attach this little tiny piece on top, you wanna slip and score that together. It will not stay otherwise. All right, next, we are gonna talk about wedging. This is a little bit quicker. I'm gonna clear my space here. Wedging is the process of mixing your clay to make sure that you don't have any mistakes, any um, inconsistencies in the clay or air pockets, which can cause pro problems later. So this is just a chunk of clay I got out. Typically, you wanna stand for this process. So I will stand up just so you get a chance to see it a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna stand over it and use both of my hands. Notice I'm using the palms of my hands. I'm not using my fingers. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push a little bit down. So I'm kind of going at an angle. I'm gonna pull back up, push a little bit down, pull back up, push a little bit down, pull back up. And you'll know you're doing it right if it still stays kind of in a round-ish form. It doesn't look like a hot dog, right? It doesn't look like a pancake. We want it to be condensed. So I'm trying to kind of make it into a ball, but with pressure and lots of different angles. So I flipped it up on its side, pushing up. Okay, the most common mistake that you see with wedging is somebody will go like this, right? That is not really staying in the ball shape. And now when I go to bend it again, look at that air pocket that I'm kind of creating there. Okay, so I only need to do this for you know, about 30 seconds. If you do it too much, your clay will be too dry. Uh, but you'll see when I feel like I'm done and this is feeling pretty mixed, I can turn it maybe one more time. And it's always good to start with something that's in a ball. So you can always pat it into a ball to start your shaping. So those two processes, we talked about slipping and scoring. We also talked about wedging. Have a great day, you guys.